Hey, what's up, guys? Yo, so like, yo, I I, I understand the Fizdale, I understand the Fizdale hate, but the, the one thing that's really bothering me right now is that like Scott Perry and Steve Mills are getting the pass. Like, let's be let's let's be honest with something for a second right now, right? Mm-hmm. When 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 Fizdale thought he was taking this job, he thought he was gonna have Chris Tapps Porzingis with him, all right? And he thought he was going to get a good draft pick. And he thought he was going to get at least a cap space to sign one person to pair with Chris Tapps Porzingis. What ended up happening? Steve, Pil- Steve Mills and Ninja Perry, or whatever you want to freaking call him, traded him for Dennis Smith Jr., who can't even play in the freaking G League right now. The guy can't even play in the rec league. He has no business being on the basketball court, Dennis Smith Jr. We traded our best draft pick for Dennis Smith Jr. and two future draft picks, which now are looking like they're not even going to be lottery picks, okay? For Dennis Smith Jr., all right? Then, on top of that, they were the ones that hired David Fizdale. How do you throw someone under the bus when you hired them, right? Like, it just, it, 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 it drives me crazy. Who, did David Fizdale give Tim Hardaway Jr. $72 million? No. Did David Fizdale, did David Fizdale give Julius Randle $63 million? Mm-hmm. Did he have, did he assemble the most garbage free agency ever? Okay, I was listen, and CP knows this because I was trying to. I went back in, in to one of the old, one of the old uh, Knicks fan TV tapes just to see what I said on you know the day that we got the new guys, and I clowned and I, I basically trashed the front organization, and literally everybody in the chat, like eighty percent of the people in the chat, were basically laughing at me, clowning on me. And you know what? I think you guys have to apologize to me. So Troy Martin TV, apologize. He's calling him out. <laughs> Name names. Pull out the names, like, Ari. Pull Scotty, out the names. Scotty Shaven. Scotty, Scotty Shaven. Hashtag sorry, Ari. I want that right now. All right? I want, uh, okay. Who else we got here? D. Greats. Um, okay. What well, a Dennis Taylor. All right. Names. The, you know, the, uh, everybody. I want it right now. Hashtag sorry, Ari. Because I said this from the beginning. When your best player, you have to understand. It's not David Fisdale's fault that his best player is the second coming of Tim Hardaway Jr. Everybody knows in basketball that typically the team with the best player wins. All right? And I'm tired of this media trashing the media, saying the media always hates on the Knicks. The media always hates on the Knicks. Remember when Bleacher Report came out with that article saying the Knicks were the worst team in the league, and everyone said, oh, it's the media blasting the Knicks. No, the media was right. We are the worst team in the league. Remember when the media came out and said Julius Randle's the 92nd best player in the NBA? Yeah, guess what? He's like the 200th best player in the NBA. Okay, so like, you can blame David Fisdale all you want. And listen, anybody who doesn't run a pick and roll, okay, in today's NBA is like the equivalent of like having a freaking Blackberry today. Like, what are you, like a dinosaur? <laughs> Obviously, David Fisdale is, is at fault. But let's not, but, but you have to understand, he was given a really, really, really bad hand by management. And for them to go after a game and sabotage their coach like that is absolutely freaking ridiculous. They should fire Steve Mills and Scott Perry right now, and they should let David Fizdale stay just to make a point. That's all I gotta say, Pete. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that was that was a classic, oh classic Ari meltdown. Salute to Ari, man. Wow, Ari <laughs> pulls out the machine gun the on everybody. J. Ellis printed takes out the <laughs> AR fifteen on everything. Uh... <laughs> Leaves, leaves nothing in his wake. <laughs> nothing. He went in. He went into the archives, J. Ellis. Yeah, man. The research. He went into the tapes, and he sh- and he and he and he, and he showed me too. He took the screenshot of everybody. Oh, he in did? The, yeah, yeah, of everybody in the chat blasted him. He, uh, he goes. He goes. Yeah, I'm coming for everybody tonight. <laughs> he had the he had the receipts ready from this morning, people. I kid you not. Ari was ready to roll, man. <laughs> I mean, listen, man. Yeah, yeah. There's enough blame to go around. I, I posted it this morning on Twitter. Steve Mills is sporting a nice 165 and 377 record as his tenure as basketball president. That's as Teflon as it comes, Jail. It's no president in any sport. Is ever going to last that long with that type of record in terms of the acquisitions that you make, no matter what yeah. is directly in your hands or not. You're just not going to last that long. You know what I mean? Yeah. We all knew he shouldn't be left alone with a pen. <laughs> no. I was no. yeah, like, when, when, <laughs> you know, when <laughs> Timmy, Timmy, when we signed Timmy, Timmy Hardaway, Baker. Yeah. Oof. Timmy Hardaway, 72 million, Ron Baker, 8 million for two years. I was like, nah, you overpaid, dog. Yeah. What was that about? That, that was, that was a straight up jokes. But, you know, again, it is what it is. This is what you have here. 
this is what you have here. And it's still, he's still not maximizing what he has. You know what I mean? Yeah. We, can, we can continue to, you know, blame the roster, but there's other coaches in this league that are doing more with less. Let's put that out there. There's other I mean, teams that are doing more with less right now. I mean, like I always say, I mean, there's like multiple reasons why, man. Like, we don't have Mitch. We have one and a half point guards. <laughs> we don't have a shot blocker because, uh, you know, the team wasn't built correctly. We we have to find a way to separate Morris and Randall. We saw what happened when Morris and Randall was separated today. And we had Knox running. The team looked pretty good, at least for that, that spell. When you, when you, you don't have to worry about not playing bad defense. Like, there's, a, there's plenty of reasons to go around that comes from the coaching to the roster construction to just plain old bad luck by the damn Knicks. Yeah. I I don't know how – I don't know how <clears> – <throat> the Morris thing pretty much ruined a lot in terms of um, roster construction because I don't see them – they wouldn't – they would have never went after Portis. I don't know that, you know, for a fact – but I'm pretty comfortable in saying they would have never went after Portis if they knew Morris was going to be available early, and maybe that money Possibly. that money could have been made on a legit um, center. Yeah, because it makes no sense. It makes no sense. You have three of the same guys. You have Kev who needs minutes at the four, and you have Taj, and you have no real. Uh, rim protection. Taj does his thing because he's a scrapper and he he can defend. Yeah, man. He's a scrapper and he's a smart, high IQ player. Yeah, he holds his own. But, they, you know, he's older now and there's only you can only go to the well but for so long. He's not going to have great games like this all the time. He had a great game tonight. Yeah, man. I still feel like we should have kept one one of the defensive bigs we had last year, man. People say Cornette. People say uh, they, sh- they should have kept uh, Iso Luke, as we like to call him. He didn't even play tonight. Cornette didn't get, didn't even get any burn tonight. Yeah, I man. At least he blocked some shots out there and put on. And he was like actually smart defensively. Yeah, yeah. He it's went to something. he went to Vanderbilt. He was he's a smart kid. 